Hello again and welcome back to another video build. This time around, I'm making the Wolverine's iconic helmet and I really hope you enjoy it. You know, no matter how much you think you know about this stuff, every once in a while, we all end up having days like this, right? Because that's a five day print right there, guys. Anyways, of course I ended up making a new one. But since I just can't bring myself to throwing away any failed prints, I'll probably end up using the first one to make some kind of, uh, well, I'm not sure yet. Maybe some kind of Wolverine zombie with some clay sculpting and stuff. That would be cool. But for this video, I stuck with a clean printout. And of course, I will go through all the steps to a finished prop. But not to make this video too long this time, I thought it might be interesting to take a closer look on how I clean up my FDM prints. After all, it is the most time-consuming part of it. And that all starts with, you guessed it, sanding. But take comfort in the fact that this first part of the sanding is just a rough go-around. Just enough to get rid of the most obvious stuff. All in all, it's just a 4-5 to five minutes cleanup, from start to finish. And then comes the part that's gonna save you a lot of time. We're gonna cover it all in some UV resin. And just a couple of comments on that part. Yes, I know you can use the stuff like XTC 3D from SmoothOn, but that's like $90 for a small two-component solution. And no, you do not need all the stuff I put on the table. I just wanted to show you two different approaches of doing this. And, you know, what's the pros and cons for what and when. So let's get on with it. First off, we're going for the fast and easy solution. It's a UV resin from YBC. And it's basically the same stuff you've seen me use in my previous videos. They have a wide variety of uses when it comes to everything prop making. You simply squeeze out some resin directly from the bottle. Then you can just choose to leave it as is. Or you can spread it out in the exact shape you want to achieve. Then you just go ahead and apply some UV light to it. Then it's actually cured in a matter of seconds. Now, the absolute biggest time saver by using this method is also the single most important thing. And that's how you apply it. Don't just smear it out from top to bottom. Cause I've seen a few videos where people do that. And that just ends up being really messy. And not to mention, you actually end up using even more time on the sanding. So watch how I work with this stuff, and I will try and explain a few key points. First off, take advantage of the viscosity of the resin. It's almost like a thick syrup. Make sure to work in small areas at a time. This lets you control the shape better. And let the resin do the job, meaning let it take its time to ease into all the print lines and other imperfections. Don't be afraid to move the prop around at different angles. This way, you can let the gravity naturally push it down to a smooth, flat surface. Think of it almost like sculpting with liquid glass. Well, except you already have the blueprint to copy it directly from. Kinda like kindergarten, when you did painting by numbers. And always have the patience to get the shape right. First, then can you apply the UV light which makes it cure in seconds. Now, depending on how you like to work with this, I for one, I like to sand down the area I just worked on directly afterwards, before moving on to the next part of the surface. This gives me total control over a clean, smooth surface, as well as preserving the sharp edges and the details exactly as I would like them. I'm pretty much done with all the overhangs, corners and different angles. 
basically all the smaller details. That leaves only the bigger surfaces left, which is pretty straightforward to smoothen out. So this is a good time to show you yet another way to do this. And that's by using your leftover 3D printing resin. Because I'm pretty sure that if you have a resin printer, you tend to end up with some leftover resin. And that's what I've saved up in my bottle right here. So by mixing in some talcum to the resin, it becomes thicker and much more manageable to control. I believe some people use baby powder, but I'm pretty sure it's the same difference. And I don't believe there's a right answer to the mixing ratio. It depends on what you're looking for. And in this case, we want it to be a bit more runny than the previous resin we used. Just be sure to mix in the talcum thoroughly, all the way to the point where it all seems to be uniformed. And don't worry about getting some air bubbles in there. You can just set it aside for a few minutes. And eventually, it should end up looking something like this. Some cleaning alcohol. Some paintbrushes of different sizes. And even a toothpick can come in handy sometimes. And then you're all set to simply brush it on. I'm clearly using a thinner viscosity this time. This will make it much easier to work in larger areas at a time. It also means you won't get any height differences or uneven edges around the parts you just brushed on the resin. A single pass won't get you all the way though, because it kind of looks and feels like fine grit sanding paper. So I find it best to apply two to three coats to fully achieve the smooth clean surface. And another benefit from doing thin coats is that it only takes 10 to 15 seconds to fully cure the whole area. That means that going over the whole prop takes surprisingly little time. And I know you can do this job with several other different mediums, like body fillers, epoxy and polyester resin, which, if I'm not mistaken, is already mixed in with some kind of talcum but they all have predefined thicknesses to them. Even so, why wouldn't you just want to use the leftover resins you probably already have? Once I believe everything has gotten a good coverage, the next step would be priming. But first, I like to give it a good cleaning with some cleaning alcohol. Because some resins, even though they're fully cured, they tend to have a thin, sticky coat left on them. So this is just to be sure to start with a clean, dry surface. Then it's time to bring out my fancy homemade cardboard spray booth. Well, it really does the job. Normally I use this only for airbrushing. Because whenever I use paint and stuff from a rattle can, I prefer to do this outside, but it's winter time now, and at the moment, it's about 22 degrees Celsius outside. Enough said. I mount the helmet by using some of my wife's reusable sticky putty. It's a quick and dirty way of making sure it doesn't run off. Then it's time to apply a couple of coats of filler primer. And since the resin we used in this video doesn't have any opaque color to it, it's kind of hard to tell what the results are as of now. So this will actually be the first time we truly can see if I did a good job of smoothing it out. What I'm really hoping for is to have gotten rid of all those print lines and at the same time having left the details sharp with clean crisp edges. But I'm happy to say it came out looking close to perfectly smooth. So, from a raw print to this result, it actually only took one afternoon. I would say that if you're looking for a perfect display prop, then maybe I would have done an additional go around with some spot putty and finally some sanding with a high grit sanding paper. But I do believe this illustrated the quick and easy way for this method and it might even have seemed like really tedious work to you. 
but that's mainly because I wanted it to be thorough in showing you the whole process. And honestly, if you take away the fact that I have to move the camera around, and always have to be mindful not to cover my shots and stuff, then I do believe it was about two hours of working time, give or take some. And I for one, I'm pretty happy with that. And I wouldn't recommend it for smaller props. For that, I would still stick with some spot putty. And hours of sanding patiently, of course. But for the size and shape of this Wolverine helmet, or even a bigger 3D prop, like my best buddy over here, this would be a perfect option, especially with all those big open surfaces. And as with everything else, this is easily combined with many, many other different approaches. And since I've really taken my time to cover the main focus of this prop video, I think I'll just quickly walk you through the final steps. First off, the paint job. I'm going for the classic, the iconic Wolverine look. And that starts with a warm yellow, almost a bright orange for the top part of the helmet. Or is it called a cowl? I'm not quite sure about the difference between the two. Maybe you guys might know that. Anyhow, I mixed up some acrylic colors for my airbrush. And come to think of it, it might have been smart to start off with a red base coat. Oh well, can't think of everything. Next up was some high glossy varnish. Once it's all fully cured, it's time for some masking. And I just love this elastic masking tape from Tamiya. It's so genius for applying along curved surfaces. And once I've secured off all the edges, I quickly cover the rest of it with some standard masking tape and a bit of plastic wrapping film. The classic look of the suit, it's actually more often portrayed with a dark brown color, but I really love the matte black and shiny warm yellow combination, which is actually a part of the 90s Jim Lee run on the comic books. Oh yeah, I'm truly a big fan of that Jedi artist. I like to pull off the masking again, as soon as the paint is dry to the touch. I don't like leaving it on for too long, as you might risk pulling off some previous color coats. For the weathering part, I went with my plain acrylic paints as usual. I don't actually mind using oil paints for weathering, but I do prefer the acrylics. It's mainly because when you apply several coats with it, with a gentle touch of a heat gun in between of course, you can slowly build up a certain texture to the prop. I find this adds to the dirty, banged-up look. And then, of course, it's time for some kind of silvery chrome rub and buff. Well, the closest I've got to it anyways. I use just enough to add a little chipping here and there. The final thing was to add some kind of eyes. And by cutting up some pieces of this thin plastic sheet, I was able to mold them to a perfect fit by using my heat gun. And this being a display prop and all, I went ahead and applied some white opaque color to it. I know it looks like really bright white, but it's actually toned down quite a bit. And with the right amount of shadows to it, I do believe it will look good, and maybe give off more of a comic book feel, which I love. Not everything needs to be with acrylic glass, like you would see on Iron Man, for instance. And with that in place, I do believe that was the last piece of work I did on this prop build. it for this video. 
because you've had a lot of questions about it. It was a bit more on the preparations this time around, and so I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell, and I will try and share my next build with you. Thanks for watching.